Hello, I'm John Gang Wong, a vascular transplant surgeon at the Catholic University of Korea Puchon St. Mary's Hospital. Today, we'll take a look at endovascular surgery. Well, to put it simply, the process of intravascular surgery in the past required a large incision with the exception of when the blood vessel was blocked, narrowed, or had an aneurysm in the blood vessel, or even abnormal blood vessel problems. However, recently, since 20 years ago, these stents and vascular treatments have been developed so as to enter the blood vessels without directly opening them. The process to this procedure nowadays is to have a blood vessel punctured by a thin needle, and then a thin wire is inserted there. You can do surgery to expand that part into a stent. All these surgeries performed right inside are called endovascular surgery. As I said before, most of endovascular surgery is usually performed because of stenosis in the leg arteries or blockage of the leg arteries themselves. Unfortunately, there is a time when claudication pain occurs. The reasons being either there is not enough blood flowing down to the leg, the other reason being there is a significant pain within the resting place. Another reason to get endovascular surgery is when you get severe arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. Because, to put it simply, blood vessels should be as elastic and as soft as tofu. With endovascular treatment, we are basing it on the leg artery. If we find stenosis or occlusion in the leg artery, the preferred action is to puncture the artery with a thin needle. The process continues with a thin wire. A narrowed or blocked vessel is pierced with said wire, and a special pigment called a contrast agent is injected into the area. After seeing the shape of the blood vessel, it is then expanded with a balloon, or if the blood vessel does not seem corrected, despite the balloon expansion, a stent insertion is then performed. Although it varies depending on the type, endovascular surgery is relatively less painful than surgery that directly exposes the blood vessel needle and makes an incision. Rather, it is said that this complication rate is better. However, stent surgery or endovascular surgery is not always the right answer. A thorough consultation with your specialist is advised. For example, people who can afford surgery can have vascular surgery, and those who are not eligible may have to have their blood vessels opened and receive surgery on the stomach or open the blood vessels directly to expose them. Therefore, it seems that the judgment of an appropriate specialist is necessary. So far, that is our discussion of endovascular treatment. Thank you.